Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Emma Schmidt and I'm a factory farm organizer with Food and Water Action based in Northwest Iowa. We are here today to announce an important action we've taken to ensure that the people of Iowa can place our trust and confidence in our elected officials. But first, I'd like to take a moment to explain who we are. Food and Water Action mobilizes regular people to build political power to move bold and uncompromised solutions to the most pressing food, water, and climate problems of our time. We work to protect people's health, communities, and democracy from the growing destructive power of the most powerful economic interests. We're here with CCI Action. CCI Action is an independent, citizen-led political force that speaks truth to power and drives public debate towards populist policies and actions that put people before profits and communities before corporations. Together, our organizations are fighting for a better, just food and farm system that works for more than just multi-billion dollar agribusinesses. From farmers to consumers, our climate to our communities. We all deserve better than the unsustainable, extractive form of agriculture dominating Iowa today. As we dive into the announcement, we ask that you leave any questions in the comments section of the platform you're viewing on. You can post your questions at any time throughout the broadcast. We will have time for a question and answer session after our speakers have concluded. Uh, and if you're a member of the press, please be sure to include your name and publication so we can be certain to address your questions at the end. And with that, uh, as many of you are aware, the Iowa legislature passed another ag-gag law deemed ag-gag 3.0 at the end of this most recent session. Ag-gag laws are intended to stifle free speech and prevent consumers from knowing how their food is raised, produced, and manufactured. Like the past two ag-gag laws that federal courts have taken action against, the first ruled unconstitutional and the second barred from being enforced for the time being, AGAG 3.0 protects the power of the corporate agriculture industry while diminishing the rights of everyday Iowans. And at the center of this latest legislation is Senator Ken Rosenboom of Oskaloosa. Senator Rosenboom sponsored and advocated for this latest iteration of AGAG. Earlier this year, the Senator was involved in an undercover investigation giving rise to questions about animal abuse and animal neglect at his factory hog farms. Unfortunately, Rather than using the revelations as an opportunity to improve conditions, Rosenboom used it as an opportunity to double down on the industry's need for secrecy and special protections. For Senator Rosenboom to play such an integral, integral part of the passage of AGAG 3.0, knowing the legislation would serve a clear economic benefit to himself is re reprehensible and a violation of the Senate Code of Ethics. The code dictates that every legislator owes a duty to uphold the integrity and honor of the General Assembly, to encourage respect for the law and for the General Assembly and the members thereof. Iowans cannot have faith in our elected officials when they abuse their positions of power. Senator Rosenboom chose to push forward legislation that protects his business interests at the expense of our First Amendment rights. This clear conflict of interest led CCI Action and Food and Water Action to file an ethics complaint with the Senate Ethics Committee. As such, we're calling on the committee to issue an admonishment against Senator Rosenboom to protect the integrity of the office. And with that, I would like to introduce Edith Hainel, a Food and Water Action and CCI Action member from Worth County, who will explain how ag-gag laws only further the harmful impact that the factory farm industry has had on her health, her community, and Iowa as a whole. Thank you, Emma. And as Emma said, my name is Edith Hainel, and I'm here today because I live one mile from a factory farm that houses 2,499 2, hogs. I protested it vigorously when it was being built in 2017. And that's partly because I have epilepsy. And prior to the factory farm being built, I had a seizure about every three to four years. And after the factory farm was built, I began having seizures every three to four months. I eventually ended up in the Mayo Clinic's epilepsy monitoring unit in an effort to control my seizures. Seizures can be caused by the air pollution from factory farms, especially hydrogen sulfide and methane. But larger than my own individual medical condition, I am here today because of the impact that factory farming has on my community and on the children in my com community. Would you knowingly expose a child to an illness such as asthma that has no anecdote? 
Would you knowingly give a child a bottle of contaminated water? That's exactly what we're allowing to happen now. Um, the ag-gag laws, like the legislation passed by Senator Rosenboom, this past session are designed to give more power and control to the factory farm industry, an industry that um, harms our public health and communities like mine. Ag-gag laws are industry-backed pieces of legislation, industry-backed pieces of legislation that aim to stifle free speech and protect corporate ag from any accountability. These laws are designed to silence whistleblowers from exposing the conditions in factory farms while keeping consumers like you and me from really understanding and knowing how our food is being produced. Ag-gag laws have been knocked down across the country in all the courts in this nation. Not all the courts, but in a lot of courts in this nation. And with one such law just recently fall falling in North Carolina just this past June, in response to a lawsuit brought by Food and Water Watch and others. Like Emma mentioned, Iowa taxpayers have already fitted, uh, Iowa taxpayers have already footed the bill twice to defend unconstitutional ag-gag laws in the court in Iowa. In 2012, the legislature passed an ag-gag bill to keep concerned citizens from recording the shameful practices taking place inside factory farms and slaughterhouses. Once the federal district court, federal district court ruled that the law was unconstitutional, then the Iowa legislature responded with ag-gag 2.0 in 2019. That legislation too has been challenged in federal court and is currently under an injunction. This most recent ag-gag legislation, which was championed and managed by Senator Rosenboom, was tacked on as an amendment to a bill relating to the spread of zoonotic diseases like the current novel coronavirus. The legislation makes trespassing on a food operation an aggravated misdemeanor, a crime punishable by up to two years in jail and a fine of $6,250. While the industry claims that this latest bill is about controlling the spread of disease and stopping bioterrorism, bio it's obvious it's truly about giving large agribusinesses, even greater power. Ag-gag laws do nothing for everyday Iowans like you and me. While it protects multi-billion, multi-billion dollar industry that pollutes our water, ruins our soil, extracts wealth from our rural economies, and drives independent factory family farmers out of business. The social, economic, and environmental fabric of rural communities like mine have been ripped apart by large-scale corporate factory farms. Long-standing relationships, long-standing organizations, neighborhoods, faith-based communities have been disrupted because of factory farming. I love Iowa. I love the children of Iowa. I love the land of Iowa. So I fight for Iowa's health and its beauty. And it's clear to me that we Iowans deserve so much better from the members of our state legislature. Thank you. That's right. Thank you, Edith. You've painted a crystal clear picture of why ag-gag laws and the industry they protect are an absolute outrage. We deserve better. And now we're going to hear from Haley Fromm of Black Hawk County. Haley is going to break down the details of the ethics complaint for us. So take it away, Haley. Thank you, Emma, and thank you, Edith. Edith is absolutely right. We deserve better from our elected officials. My name is Haley Fromm. I am a student, lifelong Iowan, and a member of Iowa CCI. As an AP government student, I studied the founding documents of the United States. Our constitution was ratified in order to create a more perfect union. Like humans, our government will never be flawless, but we can work together in order to create the best possible outcomes. President Lincoln outlined his hopes for America in his Gettysburg Address, including a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Our government should consist of citizens who work 
for the interest of their country and constituents, not swayed by their own greed. If officials are not fighting for us, it is important to hold them accountable for the sake of checks and balances. That's why Iowa C CCI Action and Food and Water Action filed an ethics complaint against Senator Rosenboom under Section 9 of the Senate Code of Ethics, which says in part that, in making a decision relative to the Senator's activity on given bills or committee work, which are subject to the code, the following factors shall be considered. A, whether a substantial threat to the Senator's independence of judgment has been created by the conflict situation. And B, the effect of the Senator's participation on public confidence in the integrity of the legislature. Our ethics complaint states that Senator Ken Rosenboom has violated this code of ethics by championing ag-gag bills. More recently, Senate filed 2,413, the legislation which Edith referenced before. Senator Rosenboom promoted this bill after undercover videos exposed practices inside of hog factories that he owns, which resulted in negative media attention. Senator Rosenboom made multiple public statements to the media that his support of ag-gag legislation is to prevent the kinds of videos and exposure that he personally was subject to. This demonstrates a lack of independent judgment due to a clear conflict of interest. His conduct has damaged public confidence in the integrity of the legislature. This, unfortunately, is not surprising, nor the first time that Senator Rosenboom has failed in his duty as an elected official to inspire confidence, respect, and trust of the public, to strive to avoid both unethical and illegal conduct and the appearance of unethical and illegal conduct. According to the DNR record, Senator Rosenboom owns and operates Rosewood Pork, a 4,340 head swine finishing factory farm in Manhaska County. Media outlets have also reported that Senator Rosenboom owns three factory farms with his brother that in total hold over 5,000 hogs. Senator Rosenboom has also used his position in the past as a committee chair to single-handedly block committee work related to stronger rules and protections related to factory farms and industrialized agriculture actions that provide a clear economic benefit to the Senator. And of course, Senator Rosenboom championed, managed, and presumably whipped support for Amendment S-5109. The Senate filed 2,413, adding ag-gag legislation to a COVID-19 response bill. Our complaint has been sent to the Senate Ethics Committee for review. Upon review of this complaint, we are asking the Senate Ethics Committee to hold a public hearing and issue an admonishment of Senator Rosenboom for his breach of public trust. Because as we heard today from Edith and know from our own experiences across all issues, the abuse of power by elected officials has real consequences for everyday people. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. I know that was a lot of information to cover. Uh, we really appreciate you laying that all out for us, Haley. Um, so just a reminder that folks can post their questions in the comment section and we'll take time to answer them here at the end. But before we get to that, I'm gonna try and pass it off to Barb Kalbach, who will explain what folks can do to support this push for accountability. We've been having a few connectivity issues with Barb, so we're just gonna give it a shot. Let's see. All right. My name's uh, Barb Alba. I'm a fourth generation family farmer from Adair County. And I'd like to thank Emma and Edith and Haley for their good presentations on this issue. I became a CCI member several years ago when a man came from two counties away, about 60 miles away, to put 7,200 sows and boars or, or adult hogs. 1,975 feet from the corner of my house. Our community organized, gathered together, worked hard, and working along with CCI, we stopped this factory farm from building. And I've remained a part of this work because, like Edith and Haley have both pointed out, we all... All right, I guess change of plans. Um, we're having some connectivity issues, so it's hard for Barb to get all the way through. Um, she had a really fire speech, so I'm a little disappointed that I have to take over for her, but just another reason why we need broadband in rural Iowa, right? Um, so 
kind of as Barb was getting to, it's our responsibility to hold our elected officials accountable. And that is why today we're asking you to take the time to add your name to a petition in support of holding our elected officials accountable, um, just like Senator Ken Rosenboom, um, to make sure that he is actually representing the people that he was elected to represent. You can add your name in support by visiting the link on your screen. Um, you know, when elected officials put corporate profits and personal interests before the people they represent, we can't let it happen. Um, our elected officials must know that their constituents will be watching and ready to hold them accountable because enough is enough. They're in office to represent us, the people of Iowa, not corporate ag in the factory farm industry. So please join us in ensuring that our government works for and answers to us by signing the petition. Um, and with that, we're happy to take any questions. So we will transition that way. All right, Kat. Legislators vote on issues that they have a personal stake in all the time. Why is this different? And can you explain why this is different for Senator Rosenboom? Absolutely. Uh, and you're right. Legislators do vote on um, issues that are related to their, you know, that they have personal stakes in. You see teachers vote on education bills. Farmers vote on water quality bills. And I have a Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship bills. Um, but the thing is, is... Senator Rosenboom clearly has a conflict of interest because he's personally benefiting from it. And, uh, you know, we've seen him make comments in the media uh, and, you know, push other ag gag bills in the past to benefit himself as, you know, an act of retaliation against this current um, undercover video that we've seen. And uh, it's, it's, it's really his job to be representing the people of Iowa, not himself. And, we, we know that that is not what's happening here. He is clearly working on his own behalf. And a lot of times when we see other legislators that, you know, do vote on bills, it's typically because they are voting on bills that they've listened to the public and, you know, heard what they wanted and voted in accordance to what they were elected to do and represented the people. That's not what Ken Rosenboom is doing. He is clearly working for himself and the factory farm industry in this instance. Um, let's see. Abby, what are you asking the ethics committee for? Great question. Um, so we're claiming that Senator Res Rosenboom has violated section nine, subsection A, B, and C of the Senate Code of Ethics. And we are simply asking them to issue an admonishment against Senator Rosenboom, um, just stating that he did wrong and sending a message that you cannot be doing this if you're an elected official of Iowa. You are here to work for us, the people of Iowa, not for yourself. Um, and hopefully from that, we will also get a public hearing. So we are able to not only speak our truth, but also hear from Senator Rosenboom himself. Pat asks, what will it take to change the recent law passed last session? It's a really good question. Um, I'm assuming, like the other ag gag laws that we've seen, it will need to go through the court system and be, you know, deemed unconstitutional or, uh, yeah, have another uh, bill that kind of defeats it. But I doubt that will happen. Um, more than likely, I will have to take it to the courts. All right. I think that kind of covers it. Um, if folks have other questions, they're always welcome to reach out to us at any time. And with that, I think we'll call a day. Thank you.